Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I am so excited today. I've got actress Annie Chang with me. So welcome, Annie. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so we were talking off camera. You're because you're on Peacemaker and you're you're now in the DC universe. You've got all kinds of interviews lined up, but we're the first. Yes, you are the first. Right. So, you know, don't listen to the saying, save the best for last. Maybe it's first. That's so. right. Maybe it's first. My The way I look at it is you looked at all the possible interviews and you're like, well, I'm doing the best one first. This is true. So, or maybe good. just you are the most on top of things. And so you reached out to me first and I was just like, yes, absolutely. This <laughs> sounds fun because you're organized and fast. <laughs> I will admit that I was, I was pretty, pretty quick. I was, yeah, I was quick on the draw. Yeah, I think you were one of the first people that I, I responded to. And and yeah, and I'm so happy to be there. And I listened to some of the other interviews you've done and it just Aww. seemed so fun and easy. So I was like, yeah, of course, this sounds great. Well, how nice of you to listen to an interview or two. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs> so, no, okay, so, so let's start here. Talk a little bit about, you know, what made you want to become an actress? How'd you get into the entertainment business? Yeah. So, you know, it was sort of a funny winding road. I, I think a lot of actors usually are like, I have known since I was five, you know, I came out of the womb acting and doing a Shakespeare monologue. And I was not like that. I, um, I danced a lot as a kid and I really wanted to be a, a dancer. And then my mom sent me off to a dance camp and I was like, oh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I want to be that serious. Like they were so structured, you know? So I was like, okay, maybe not that. And um, uh, in high school, I got involved with the musicals because I liked dancing. And then I was like, well, I like singing, but nobody else likes it when I sing. <laughs> so I was like, maybe not musical theater. And then, and then it just seemed like, well, acting makes sense. And that, yeah. and I enjoy it. And um when I told my parents that I wanted to do that, uh, they, you know, I come from a very academic household. My parents are electrical engineers. My brother oh. currently um, is like working in a computer as a computer programmer at a startup. Like they're very not in the arts. So when I told them that I wanted to do this, my mom was like, well, what about a journalist. You could be like Connie Chung. You'd look great with the haircut. And I was like, no, that's not the same thing. <laughs> so What's on she, TV? Right, right. That's true. So she was like, you know, I'll let you apply to like three. She was like, you still have to go to college. You can't not go to college. So she let me apply to some acting schools that she thought, you know, she did like her research and she was like, apparently these are the best ones. And then I had to apply to all the Ivy leagues, you know, and she thought, she said, if you get in one of these top three, you can only apply to three and if you get to in one of those I'll let you go otherwise if you don't get in maybe you're just like not good enough you know and I was like yeah. okay that's fair um and then I, I got in, yeah and then I got into NYU and honestly even now I sometimes think like am I doing this like I'm waiting for the time where I'm like no mom you were right like I'm gonna go do I'm gonna go like be a lawyer now or something you know <laughs> Good for her for at least allowing you to give it a go. Yeah. You know, she was so, especially for like, you know, she's an immigrant. My dad's an immigrant. And there are a lot of stories of, you know, households where, where that is so not allowed, you know, and parents are so right. unsupportive. And actually my parents were for, for who they were and where they had come from, they were incredibly supportive. And I, Terrific. I don't think I could have done what I've gotten to do without their support. So yeah, they're pretty awesome. Good. Good yeah. job, mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, because it's such a tough profession to break into. So I understand as a parent, you're, you might be a little worried, you know, because a lot of, there's a lot of talented people that don't make it that's in acting. So, so you're concerned. So I think that's, that's really great that they, they, they let you at least, at least give it a try. I'm sure if it didn't work out, they would have plenty of suggestions for what you do next. <laughs> yes. But they're very funny, you know, when I was working on this show. So I live in Los Angeles, the show mm -hmm. shot in Vancouver in Canada, which is, yeah. I never been, it's gorgeous. Um, and I remember when I was there, I'd call my mom and she'd be like, 
so she's like, do you have enough money for food? And I was like, well, they, they give you money for that mom. And she was like, but rent there must be very high. And I was like, well, they, they do pay for housing. And she was like, you're there for six months. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's going to be long. And she was like, will we see your face? And I was like, what do you, what do you think I'm doing up here? <laughs> you know, there's, they're so cute. They're so funny. They're just convinced that like, oh, she must be a struggling artist because you're absolutely right, Mike. You know, like there are so many very talented people in this business who for reasons I don't understand, you know, are not, are, are it's not working for them. So it's, they're just very funny. They're just like any minute now, she's going to be homeless, but we will be here for her. <laughs> so when, when you were coming up, did, did you, did you play an instrument or anything or, or were you, were you more, you, you know, you did. Okay. So what instrument did you play? I, uh, we were, we were very Asian. We played the piano. We played, uh, and when I say we, I mean, me and my brother, I play the piano. I play the violin. I played the cello and the flute for a hot second, but wow. I'm not good enough at those that I would pick them up now, but the piano and the violin I played for, uh, like competitively, at a high level, maybe for like 12, 13 years. Yeah. From being a little kid. Yeah. All the way until, until. Is it, is it similar to like, like would competitive violin, is that similar to like competitive dance? So you go and you play and you're judged against yeah. other people. There are like private competitions and then there are some that are statewide, you know, yeah. and there's like exams you can take to get to certain levels around music theory. Um, and you have to know about like the, you know, composers of different eras and understand what makes these different eras different. I mean, it was like a lot of work and I was stressed out all the time. <laughs> um, oh. uh, but, you know, now I love the fact that I can play the piano and the violin. Uh, when I first started acting, I used to get auditions all the time for someone who could play an instrument, funnily enough. Yeah, that so was my next helped. question was, did it help you in acting? Yeah, it totally did. I mean, I don't know if I, I'm trying to think, I don't know if I ever actually booked anything where I did have to play something, <laughs> but I remember in the beginning, like right out of school, I was bringing my violin to so many auditions because it was such a, an easy specific way in, you know? Um, right. yeah, but yeah. Oh, Do you play instrument? Oh my goodness. No, my poor <laughs> aunt, my poor aunt was a music teacher and she tried to teach me piano for a couple of years yeah. and it, it did me no good and it absolutely <laughs> didn't do her any good. It was, I was terrible. <laughs> Luckily, uh, the, the kids, you know, my kids can play, you know, yeah. they, they, uh, they, they play and, and, and they can uh, play by ear, you know, which I think is just amazing. You know, they can pick amazing. up an instrument. If you give them a couple of minutes, they can play it. Yeah. So I don't know that I, I always find that uh, very interesting, but apparently the only talent that, uh, that, that I was able to uh, garner was, was, you know, gabbing on a podcast. Which is a talent. I listened to your it, other yeah. interview where you said you were an introvert. And I was like, I don't know if I believe that because you're <laughs> like, you at this. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. I'll tell you what, you, you've already earned your way back. That's, okay. that's at least two compliments. That's at least two. And <laughs> but we're really you are. It's hard. I don't think I could do this. I, I wouldn't know what to talk about or what to ask or to keep the conversation going. I'm the person at the party where you try to make conversation. And then there's just a lot of weird silences because I don't know what to say. So it, this is a, this is a skill. So yes, even if you can't play the piano, you have, you have a musical mouth. We'll say that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, You're welcome. I think we're done. I, I, I can't okay, go any great. higher than this. <laughs> I will say that this has helped me with being an introvert and, and I feel more comfortable. I've got all this useless knowledge banging around in my head, you know, like I'm very good at picking out. I can tell you what so-and-so has been in or what, you know, what they've done that's in there, not real viable in most professions, but as a podcaster, not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. So, so that helps me. And then preparing, 
you know, taking a little bit of time and kind of preparing a little bit ahead of time, that makes me more comfortable. But I will say it's a little bit of a, I'll admit it's a little bit of a skill to be able to prepare, but not sound like you're just doing an interview that yes. you've written down. You know, I, I, I like to think that we are very conversational. Yeah, which is what's nice about it, which is so refreshing. And and I think that is the difficulty, right? Making it sound, the same with acting, honestly, right? Making the <laughs> planned sound unplanned, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I saw, so I, I'm nerdy um, and I'm a big uh, Lovecraft fan. And I saw you did some producing for uh, Collar Out of Space. So... That is a very funny story because that's actually not true at all. Okay. Well, tell me <laughs> so, the story. Yeah. Tell me the story. So it's not, well, it's, it's funny because I was just speaking with somebody else about this today where, uh, it's, it seems like a very cool project. I had no involvement at all. So I don't know who they think are, I are am. Are you sure that you didn't have any involvement? <laughs> right. Well, who knows? Yes. It's very possible that I did, but I saw it pop up one day yeah. I, just on imdb and it's out there I was like, yeah and i was like what is this and then i because i actually have produced mm -hmm. some things before usually like passion projects or yeah. if i had uh someone very close to me was working on something there's something about producing that i enjoy so i actually have produced projects before so i was like wait what what is this like what's <laughs> happening and then I was like, this isn't me. They're, they must have me confused with someone else. Annie Chang is like, you know, not a super uncommon name. I, you know, I was like, I'm sure yeah. there's maybe just someone else with a similar name. So I wrote them and I wrote IMDb and I was like, I want to just make sure that this actual person gets the credit they deserve. Right. Yeah, they may be and, looking for their credit. Yeah, and they might be wondering like, why am I, you know, not being acknowledged? And, um, <laughs> and, and I didn't hear anything from the production, but... Uh, but IMDB got back to me and they said, oh, we spoke with them and they said they have the right person. And I was like, but that's me. <laughs> and that's not me. <laughs> and I've had this fear, not like a huge fear, but I've had this, um, this, I, I was like, oh no, I hope someone doesn't see it and thinks it is real oh, yeah. and then want to talk there about it. Go. And then here, here we I are. am. See? Here so I, I am. But, but I actually brought it I, up to ask you about the producing side. You know, so, you know, produ I, producing, when, when somebody says that to me, what, what I would have thought, you know, before I got into this is that means you gave some money to something, to your producer, but producing it can actually be much more than that. So my question really was, you know, what, you know, when you produce something, you know, what's your involvement? You know, what are you, yeah. what are you helping with? So you're actually right about about that. It's just that producing can look like a lot of things. Sometimes people give a lot of money and yes, what they want is I want to be credited as a producer, right? But sometimes uh, a producer can also be someone who didn't give a lot of money, but has done a lot of, uh, you know, there are line producers and there are story producers. There are a ton of different kinds of producers. I have mostly done it in a sense where I had a creative hand in it. I yeah. did a lot of logistics as far as figuring, and a lot of the things I've produced have been on a smaller budget, you know, nothing like sure. Peacemaker or anything like that. So on a smaller budget, you probably, as a producer, have the job of like five different producers. Right, you get, you get more hats. Yeah, yeah. So it was thing, anything from, you know, securing locations to um, uh, figuring out, you know, deals with the talent and uh, uh, scheduling and uh, all the logistics of that kind of stuff um, sure. that's not so creative just to make something happen. That's mostly what I've done because I, while I do write and create projects of my own, I think that if I were doing something creative, I couldn't take on all that kind of stuff, you know? That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So that's mostly been the producing I've done when I've really believed in someone and believed in the project and knew that they needed help in that area. Yeah. Um, I have done some of that. It's hard. It's yeah, hard. I, it sounds hard. Yeah. Um, but it's rewarding when, when something, when, when you finish it, you know, when you know you started from nothing and just an idea and no money and no idea how you were going to do it to it becoming a finished product that the world can see that maybe leads to other bigger and better things. Um, 
I think that is truly exciting to create something from absolutely nothing. Yeah, that sounds that sounds kind of amazing. And it's probably very rewarding when you yeah. get to see this this thing that you're helping to develop actually become something. That's, that's yeah, cool. yeah. That's cool. Is it possible that because you work so hard as a producer on these other projects, they just said, well, we're just going to make her a producer? <laughs> Maybe. If that's the case, I want to know, what do I get? I don't know, but I'm thinking maybe you should go watch the movie just in case. Just in case. And then just start in case anyone else asks me about it, since yeah. you're my first, I can just talk about it and like help them out and promote it as well. That's right. Help them out. Help them right. out. I will say it's it's a pretty fun movie. It's yeah. Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage, but it's it's a pretty fun movie. If you like oh, that. Okay. Stuff. I mean, I like Nicolas Cage. I think he's great. So he is great. Yeah, How could I, I know. Like they him? need to give him, he does a lot, but they need to give him more. He's fun. He is fun. He's very fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the first time that I remember seeing you on TV was probably Shades of Blue. Yeah. My God, that feels like a long time ago. Um, I, know. I was looking at that and I was like, well, that really wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I know. It's, you know, I think, uh, time just keeps going by faster and faster. And sometimes you're, you know how things can feel like they were yesterday, but then you're like, at the same time, it was also a hundred years ago. Yes. Like, which one is it? That's how that feels. But yeah, I think that was maybe the first thing that I did that had numerous episodes that had arcs, you know, I had done pilots and, and like a couple episodes here and there of things. But I think that was like the first thing that I got to do where, uh, where I had a lot to do um did you like you that show? On there. i did you were yeah. good on that. i mean okay. I, I mean jennifer lopez ray liotta and you yeah oh, it's, like, it's a great cast i remember my first day i was shooting with jennifer and um i was so nervous and the first day i had to point a gun at her face and i had never held a gun uh and never shot a gun never held a gun did and they i have to teach you well, like I thought they would, but then they just gave it to me and they're like, here you go. And I was like, what do I, what do I do with this? You know, for Peacemaker, I had, I had lots of, you know, cause I have to shoot it and do all sorts of right. things. So I did have much more training, which I really appreciated, but, um, but on Shades of Blue, they kind of just like threw me right in there. Um, but I found Jennifer to be a lovely, lovely person to work with. And she was very generous and sweet. And so, um, so that was nice. Cause I was very scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. And and I should have said, you tell me if if these came before. I think that was the earliest, but I remember you making an appearance on um, Jim Gaffigan's show. Yeah. Was that before right. or after Shades of Blue? That's a good question. I feel like I did an episode. I feel like I worked with Jim after... But that's a really right. good question. I don't yeah. quite remember. I think it was after, I, but it was kind of around the same time. Cause you know, I did two different seasons of Shades. So it spanned kind that's of right. you know, a significant amount of time. So, uh, uh, so I think that Jim Gaffigan episode was probably like somewhere near the tail end of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I thought that it was probably around there, but a little after. And the other one was uh, uh, Master of None. Yeah. Yeah, I think Master of None was maybe before it, which was really fun. I feel like Master of None- Love that show. Like, yeah, it was also a game changer in how shows are done. Cause you were like, this yeah. is so great, but what is it? Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? Like, what is it? You know, it, it kind of has a plot, but like, not really. I feel like Master of None really changed the way that people were doing shows, you know? Right. Um, yeah. It's a great show. And, and the new season, you know, where he's kind of stepped, away from the the main yeah. character and stuff amazing i mean a little yeah. bit heartbreaking but amazing yeah and i think that show basically said to everyone else hey you can make whatever you want and there's don't have to be rules you know that's right you suddenly have it be about someone else great do it <laughs> why not yeah yeah it was well done it was well done but you you were very good on that uh, as oh, well thank you. and i think well, i want to make sure i get this right um i always we I always play this game with the kids where i'm like where have you seen this person from? You know, before yeah. I come on here, I'll show them a picture. So my oldest Grey's Anatomy fan, she said you were on there. That's true. That was okay. 
recent. How funny. Wait, how many, I know you have a son because I know this was originally something you no, were doing. I've got two, two of my own and then two stepchildren. So, oh, so okay, got got, and then four grandkids. Oh, wow. Big yeah. family. Big family. So yeah, my son does the podcast with me. He used to do it on camera, figured out he didn't like that, but he likes doing the editing and all the hard stuff. Which I'm like, yeah. okay. Oh, good. Great. Yeah. I, I let him handle all the tough stuff. I just show up and start talking. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a good deal. I like that. Yeah. It's, it works out pretty good. And, and we do episodes where it's just us, where we're just like, we'll talk, we'll be doing a peacemaker episode once the, you know, the season wraps up. We'll oh, do great. just, just me and him and we'll talk about, you know, all the fun stuff from that and stuff. So we'll, yeah. do, we'll do that. And those, honestly, those are my favorite ones to do, you know, because I like spending time with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I was gonna say that it's it's so funny to have going back for a sec to Grey's Anatomy because when people are like, "Oh yeah, you did Grey's Anatomy," it's like even when I got the audition for that job, I was like, "Wow, this show is still happening." I mean, they are for decades. Yeah, (laughs) just a million years, you know? I was like, my God, that show is so successful. And people love it, you know? People are still, people have been, who've been watching it since season one are still. Well, I used to watch it when it first came out. And it just, it just, it got too big for me, I guess. It just kept going and going. It's kind of like a soap opera. Yeah. You know, it's just weekly instead of daily. Yeah. Which, by the way, you you've done soap opera before. I, I, I saw, I saw, <laughs> which I think job. I've talked to a few uh, soap opera stars, and I think it's a really good way to to get good at uh, learning lines because it's so fast. Yes, when yeah. I did a couple episodes on a soap. The first thing that I remember, because I was like right out of school, I was so excited for the job, and I remember they did some rewrites and, and my, and not for me, my lines didn't change. Thank God. But they did some rewrites for my scene partner. And he looked at it for like a second and was like, okay, I'm good. And in my head, I was like, no, you're not. And then we did it. (laughs) Yeah. And then he just said it. And I was like, wow, like, that muscle is so strong. Um, yeah. You know, they just then they go through so many pages a day. It's very impressive. It's very impressive, and they're very skilled at what they do. It sounds exhausting. It really is. Oh, I'm sure it is. I mean, you know, I would say they go through like double, triple the amount of pages that like a show like Peacemaker would get through in a day. Probably maybe more. You know, so they have to know. So they have to be on so on top of their game all the time. Yeah. And the writers, I mean, how stressful would it be to write for a soap opera? Because you'd have to just be putting stuff out nonstop. Right. And how do you keep raising the stakes? <laughs> you know, that's kind of fun watching them try. <laughs> right. right. It's very impressive. It's very impressive. So let's talk a little Peacemaker. Yeah. So I'm so excited. You know, I'm a, a former comic book store owner and I was a collector my entire, you know, childhood. That's you know, that was, that was my thing. So I, I've been reading Peacemaker back before it was even DC, you know, DC bought the character oh. at some point. So it was a uh, Charlton comics. Yes. And then DC bought it. And then they made it into this terrific show, which my opinion, best thing DC has done so far. Really? really? Just, yeah. <laughs> it's so, and you're terrific on it. You're so good on oh, it, but it's, you. it's, uh, it makes you care for characters that are kind of unlovable, you know, which I think is not easy to do. And then it has, you know, a great story and it's funny. And those are starting elements that you see all together. Yeah. I think that's James. It's James, you know, I mean, James is just such a talent and I think he does so many things, uh, so well but I think what I love about his work is that he can you can really he can really humanize anything anything you know and he will so adeptly make something funny and then immediately in the next moment sad and then immediately in the next moment 
And is that not life? You know, is that not how we experience life as well? And so, uh, I mean, I think it's all that that's all thanks to James. The cast is fantastic. You know, the, yes. I mean, everyone Amazing in it cast. is so fun. Yeah. Um, uh, but I actually didn't know that about Peacemaker. I'll be honest, growing up, I was not into comics. I, you know what I did have though? I used to really like the Archie comics. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, well, yeah, Riverdale's out there now. I know, which so then it's so funny because Lachlan, who plays my uh, partner yep. in Peacemaker, is on Riverdale, and so I was like, "Oh, this is funny." <laughs> um, uh, I loved Archie. It comics. was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, he's a lovely person too. But I used to have uh, just like hundreds of them. I had so many. I don't know where they are now, and I want to hunt them down. They must be They're somewhere. in your mom's attic. Probably, right. yeah. <laughs> or she's already thrown them away because yeah. she was like, I asked you a hundred times and you didn't answer. Um, <laughs> See, now you've got peacemaker knowledge. You can bring it back and impress people on set. That's true. That's true. Now I know. Um, I'm so glad that you're enjoying the show. It's so hard to tell when you're doing it. You're like, I think this is great, but is it's it so just good. because I'm spending so much time doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, no. I mean, talk a little bit. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about that opening sequence. I mean, that is hilarious. That's one of the, you know how, you know, now when you watch shows, it gives you the option of skipping the intro. Right. We do not skip that. And we've seen it now, you know, five or six times now. It's hilarious. Because it's ridiculous. <laughs> I it remember is. when I think I got like an email or something while working on the show where they said, hey, we want to schedule you for um, a quick rehearsal for the opening credits. And I was like, oh, is there a is there a script or like, what are we? And they were like, no, no, just uh, if for the dance sequence. And I was like. Were you excited as a former dancer? You're like, oh, I get a dance. Yes, on, on one hand, I was like, wait, that's great. And then I was like, no one checked if I could dance though. It's been a long time. I was like, what kind of dance are we talking here? And they were like, no, no, you'll be fine. So I, it was funny because we didn't know, I think, who was going to be doing what sections. So I ended up learning way more than what I actually did. Um, uh, and I swear, and I think everybody was stressing about it. Like, oh God, you know, no one asked me if I have two left feet and I have two left feet. And, um, and it was so, it was so fun. And I think that was the first day that I really got to just be with the whole cast, you know, so all of us really getting to be together and you know, we shot this during COVID. So we weren't hanging out a lot outside of work. You know, we were trying to be really careful. And um, uh, Carissa, who who choreographed it, is a genius. I mean, the day, it's so weird. And we were all like, this is so weird. Uh, and keeping a straight face was very hard. <laughs> um, uh, so funny. But, it was so unexpected. Yes, for us too. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were all confused of like a dance sequence is this a, was this a musical like what's happening but um uh it was so fun i think that's the most one of the most fun things i've ever worked on just period yeah. is that is that silly intro i mean yeah because it kind of sets the tone for the uh the show i mean everybody got involved that's what was so hilarious about it yeah yeah everyone's involved and I think it's, well, there's some things I want to say, but you, but, but not all the episodes are out yet. So I can't, but what I will say is that I think once, as you make your way through the show, and I think as if you go online now, you'll see some people have theories about like, oh, they're doing the dance this way because of this. Or I saw someone else be like, does anyone notice that all these moves look like space invaders? And I thought, <laughs> that's weirdly very true. I don't know yeah. if Chris had that in mind, but yes, it does look like that. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, but I hadn't thought of that when we were doing it. I just thought, okay, I gotta make sure I do all these weird moves correctly. <laughs> Don't you think now for birthday parties and stuff, you, you need to sh just show up and pop into the dance? You know, uh, I haven't thought about that for birthday parties, but my boyfriend keeps making fun of me and he keeps saying, okay, this year for Halloween, I'm going to be peacemaker and you can just be yourself. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, but it's, it's very, it's very funny. You need to dress up as peacemaker and he can dress up as the eagle that is a great idea i will propose that to him 
the moment we are off this podcast. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Have, did you at least teach him the dance? Oh, yes. I He watched me do it so many times that sometimes he would try to join me <laughs> in doing it. Um, he, he needs to start uh, like a TikTok or a YouTube channel and just do that. Right. The TikToks of people doing this dance are so hilarious. fun. They're hilarious. I never thought in a million years that people would do that. And I love that, that everyone's doing it. Um, uh, it's so fun. I wish we could all get together and do like a full peacemaker music video. That's like, a, <laughs> <laughs> like a Christmas special, you know, music video or something. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'll text James. I'll tell him. It's my idea. I'm very interested. So it's episode six airing today, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, once this episode airs, episode seven will probably be out. But right now, episode six comes out. So I saw a picture of you and you had you were kind of covered in some blood. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I'm very worried. Are, are you going to be OK? Um, that depends on your definition of OK. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, I won't spoil it for you, but it's, um, I, I'll be there till the end of the season, but, uh, uh -oh. but maybe not in a way you expect. Oh That's boy. all I know, oh but episode six is like where everything goes down. It's like yeah. suddenly everything is going South. And I think James had tweeted that this is his favorite episode. It's definitely my favorite episode because I think it's like, everything that you're building up through the seasons, all the problems, not only with, you know, the butterflies, but also with, you know, Peacemaker's father, like we're planting the seeds of um, judo master, right? Like all the possible conflicts, I think in episode six, it's like, oh, all these bombs that we planted, they're going to all go off. <laughs> um, That's exciting. I'm hearing really good things about, like a lot of people saying this is their favorite. Yeah, I actually haven't. I mean, obviously, I know what happens, but I actually haven't watched it yet or seen it yet. I also save it for my Thursday night. Um, I've seen little tiny bits and pieces from doing, you know, ADR and things like that, but I haven't seen it in full. So I'm also very excited. But yeah, this is this is a uh, plot wise. It's where everything just kind of starts to explode. It's exciting. It's exciting. So yeah. did were you blood splattered or did they just apply that before they took the you know, did it happen uh, while they were shooting or did was it? Well, I can answer you, but it's going to give away a little something. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. Spoilers. <laughs> um, uh, it was originally in my mouth and it was coughed up onto myself. Oh, and then however, ooh, that probably I, tasted terrible. It was disgusting. <laughs> really and it's very thick, you know, because it can't look like water, you That's know, right. so it's actually very syrupy and, and weird. So um, they didn't have, we didn't know how it was going to look until I coughed it up on myself. And then they would, then they tried to match what I did to myself for, you know, right. all the rest of it. Um, uh, yeah, it was gross. And it was very hard. Cause I, there were moments where I was like, Oh, I think I'm actually choking, you know, cause you <laughs> are trying to keep all the liquid in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I was going to Is it a packet that you got to bite down on or is it just, you're holding liquid in your when we shot it, um, uh, I think they cut between me not having it and then suddenly having it. So they just would pour it in my mouth and I would just hold it in there. And then I would try to cough it up as hard as I could, you know, you know, um, uh, uh, which is hard when it's very, yeah. thin, you know, um, but it was so fun. I've never done anything that required so much, uh, gore and guns and all this exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it's really fun. Did you have to do any special training outside of learning the gun stuff, you know, beforehand? Beforehand, no. But, you know, when I auditioned for it, I didn't, they wouldn't give us the full script. You didn't really know the storyline. Right. You didn't really know anything, right? Because you're they're protecting you. Yeah, yeah. they got to be and secret. So, yeah, so I, um, I did have to train for some things when I got there, which were a total surprise to me, um, uh, which will come in later episodes. Um, uh, but yeah, there were some things that I had to work on for for quite a while because it was totally new to me. I just didn't yeah. have any prior experience in it. So, but I, I think that's the most fun about being an actor is when you get a part and you're like, oh, I now have to try and be good at something that I've never done before. <laughs> that's the fun, right? I think that's it's very fun. fun. 
Yeah. Yes. I think that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, are, yeah. are we going to get a season two or is everything wrapping up this year? I don't know. I, I, from what I understand, there have, there is very likely going to be a season two. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. If that's not true. <laughs> she says there's a season two. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. If that's not true. Did I, I just made it up. Um, uh, she also I, said she's a producer on, you know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe there, there is, but I don't know all the details necessarily surrounding that or, or what might happen, but, but that's the murmuring that I feel like I've. I mean, you're in the, you know, the, the DC universe now, so you can pop up all over the place. I know, which is so exciting to me. And I feel so spoiled that my first experience got to be with James. I just have to say for a second that he is like an actor's dream. You know, some directors, they may be wonderful directors, but sometimes they don't always know how to speak with actors because an actor's brain is so different, right? The director has to look at a thousand different components. Right. And the Big picture. Yeah. yeah, James is an actor's director. Like he is, uh, an act and I think that's why he always makes things with fantastic performances because he knows how to talk to actors and he knows what actors need to feel confident and comfortable to deliver. Um, so I just wanted it on record that he is just like a dream to work with as, as an artist. Um, that's amazing. Uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. 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 He would be a, a really terrific guy. Like if you had aspirations to do things behind the camera he would be a really good one to to watch yeah and kind of pay attention to yeah he's so talented he's so talented and just like the most down-to-earth fun wonderful person. we need him to we need him in the star wars universe i think i mean i think whatever he touches is great you know oh, it will be. it will yeah. of course yeah but i'd love to see him take a you know totally. a hand in that yeah it's not that they're doing badly as is no no, but I did you. I'm I'm sure you did. But did you watch his Suicide Squad? Oh yeah. Oh, I you know, like I said before, uh, superhero stuff has not always really quite been my thing. But I watched it and I just was like, wow, yeah, so funny and touching. And I don't know. I was just like, for a long movie, I thought it was like ten minutes long. I was like, oh, it's done. Yeah. It, it was it was so good. And and his Guardians movies were just like that as well. It's I think it's amazing, like like he makes you think he's a fan of of the genre, not like DC or Marvel because he's done so great with both of them, but just the yeah. the, the whole comic book thing because he does so well, giving every character their moments. Yeah, and that's hard to do when you have kind of a big cast. Yeah, I think that James also, you know, sometimes I think you get DC or Marvel or whoever they'll get a director who maybe does something else really well. And they try to be like, okay, I want you to come do this universe or whatever. But maybe the director is known for making indie films or something that's very far away yeah. from superhero universe. But I think this is also what James actually loves. Yeah. And you can feel that love you and can. care with each character, you know, as opposed to someone who's like, maybe this isn't quite their thing or, you know, it's not their forte or necessarily what they set out to do. I think it just all lines up for him where he loves it. And he's also really crazy talented at doing it. So you feel that in everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did Mr. Cena teach you any wrestling moves? Unfortunately not. I think he was intimidated by my strength. Yeah, that's probably what he's probably like. She's she's good. She doesn't need it. But what I was, you know, I didn't know a lot about John beforehand, but I didn't find out until one of my last days working with him. I, I'm Chinese. I speak Mandarin. That he also speaks Mandarin. I don't know if you knew that. I knew that actually. Yeah. I have heard him speak Mandarin before. Yeah. Apparently the whole world knew that, except I didn't. And then on the last day, somehow it came up and then he started speaking to me in Mandarin. And I was like, wait, John, what? why didn't you do this earlier? We could have been like telling each other secrets this whole time. You know, you're just, you're just giving this to me now. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife worked, she works for Live Nation and, and wow. she worked the 2008 Olympics. So she was in Beijing for a month uh, during the Olympics. So before she went, I mean, it was just constant 
you know, the, uh, what is it, Rosetta Stone, oh, over okay. and over, over, and over, you know, <laughs> learning Mandarin. Yeah. And it got to the point, by the time she left, all the kids could speak it a little bit, you know, because we'd listen to it. So, and back then, I could at least say a few things. You know, you know now it's like, like Ni Hao, and, and that's it. You know, I can't <laughs> yeah. remember any of it because it's been so long. But I just remember that, you know, the kids were pretty little at that time, but they were speaking it. I'm, I, I was like, boy, that's, it, it kind of shows you, you know, when, when kids are really young, if you just expose them to, to yeah. different languages, they'll pick it right up. They can do anything. Yeah. They're just sponges, right? Um, yeah. If they're around it, they'll figure it out. It's like sometimes I think I it's a really pretty language too. You know, I don't know that yeah. like, you hear that a lot, but to me, it was very musical when I, when I've listened to it. So. Yeah. Cause it's a tonal language too. But first of all, I want to say like, I commend your wife for trying to learn it because it is like as far as you can Difficult. get from, oh. from the English language, you know, I mean, there yes. are sounds and ways that we form sounds that I think if you didn't grow up forming them, you're like, what is that? What is that sound? I don't know. How do I move what's my the, um, What's the word for like, if you're saying you're sorry, you're apologizing. Yeah, I had it. I had the worst time with that. I don't know why. <laughs> I just could not get that. I, I mean, it's very that. difficult, you know. And I so anyway, I just think anytime someone who's not Chinese speaks even a little bit, I'm always like impressed because I'm yeah. like, it's hard. It's yeah, not. But, but John's really good at it. He is. And when and when he said he spoke Mandarin, my I'll be honest, my first thought was oh no, he's going to say something. And I'm not going to know what he's saying because he's going to be butchering it. And then I don't want to be rude. And I was like, I was in this whole thing in my head. I was like, okay, just don't be rude. Just act like you know what he's saying, even if you don't. And then he started speaking and I was like, what I can actually understand you. Yeah, yeah. He's, he has the pronunci pronunciations down. It's, it's, yeah. I was yeah. just trying to learn to say I'm sorry because I figured that would be the one I would probably need. <laughs> <laughs> that's very no that, yeah he's he's uh terrific and and turned out to be a really talented actor so good yeah. and especially i think in this part he i don't know if people know this or not most of the lines that he says in the script are what james wrote but he actually is fantastic at improvising um, <laughs> he is fantastic and he would improvise all the time and I was just like wow you are wildly great at this um uh that's an impressive skill yeah a lot of actors can barely do it you know uh, yeah. uh trained heavily as actors you know and the fact <laughs> that he can just come up with whatever and he's so free um he's fan I think he's fantastic yeah in this part it's yeah. so great for him so the the last episode that we watched would have been episode five, and mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed that because you get to see how broken he really is. You know, yeah. he's just he's so depressed in the one part of the episode, and the Eagles try and cheer him up, and then later in the episode, it's coming. You know, it's coming out as he's just a a real butt to everybody. You know, he's yeah. just mean everything but it's really because he has all this bad stuff going on inside of him and that's kind of how he projects it I just I thought he did a terrific job with that. yeah I did too I also think was this the last episode or maybe one before but that scene where he and um Adebayo I think he goes to the prison and he's about to go talk to his dad and Adebayo says to him you know he's not a good guy you know and you can just see him kind of realizing it but being like he's my dad and I think that that the nuances and you know he's not just funny it's not just him like you know fighting people and being funny like he really as an actor has a lot of layers and nuances and a lot of heart in what he does um uh yeah I loved working with him I thought he was fantastic yeah he's really good he's really yeah. good and he he's in okay shape He's all right. Yeah, he's just fine. Um, <laughs> I mean, he could work on it a little bit, but you know. This is, I don't think this is quite a spoiler, but there's one episode where upcoming where I have to put my hand on his neck. Yeah. And I remember in, we were doing it and we were getting ready 
And at first I was like, I was like, I cannot, I can, I, I'm not that small of a person, but I was like, I, and they were like, Annie on the mic, they were like, can you put your hand around his neck? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> this is as large as my hand will go. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very funny because I was yeah, like, I he's so big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I and, thought you, you were just, or are terrific in it. I love the way to me, and I thought you kind of did this on Shades of Blue too, but you, you give a lot without saying a lot like you're you, the the way you control your facial expressions really good because you can see a lot going on I think in in the way you're acting does that make any I'm not sure I'm saying yeah that. no I appreciate that that's actually I think something that I have been in my career out of school that I have been trying to work on for a long time I think when you leave acting school yeah. um you you know you get all these great ideas about your characters and then you kind of want to show everybody like, look at these great ideas I have, but that acting is always weird. It's never good. You know, it always looks a little forced or a little too much and whatnot. And so I've actually very consciously made an effort, especially I would say between Shades and Peacemaker of, and this is something James used to say to people on set all the time where he would be like, just think it. You don't have to show me whatever the thought is, just think it. And so I very consciously try to be like, just think it. The camera's like right here, you know, <laughs> like you're, you're probably going to see it if I just actually think it and that's it and not feel like I have to show anything. Well, I think it's working. Yeah. So I appreciate that because I've been yeah. working on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it shows, it shows really good. Do you, so if, if you weren't in the role that you're in it, what role would you want on the show? Oh. You could have any role, man uh, or woman. Uh, hands down, vigilante. Yeah, he's fun. He's so good. Also, I don't know if you're familiar with Freddie, but he's British. I mean, first of all, on a base level, his his American accent is like flawless. Really yeah, yeah it's really, really good. good. But his comedic instincts and he's like, I, I don't understand how he can be so terrifying and sweet at the same time. Yeah. Um, but he's so good. But I think that is the most silly, ridiculous <laughs> part of the show. You know, uh, in the in the comic book, he it is not a funny character. Really? Like what he, is he like in the comics? Well, he's like the Punisher. He's like DC's version of the, the Punisher. I don't know if you're familiar with that on the Marvel side, yeah. but he's just brutal. You know, he's very, he's out there to take people out. There's no joking or anything. It's a very serious character. And yeah. I just absolutely love this take on it where they, you know, he can be serious at, you know, kind of scary at times, but it's a, I mean, he's kind of comedic relief in a show that's already kind of funny and he's, oh, he's so good. Yeah. Yeah. But he does have moments, you know, when they're um, when they're hiding, scary like, moments. bushes. Yeah, and he just takes the family out one by one. You know, um, he does have something. He's like missing a screw in his brain. You oh know? yeah, there's something wrong there. Yeah, something something wrong. Wrong. I thought it was a really good take because the uh, uh, the comic version to me was a, is kind of boring. You know, because yeah. he's very one dimensional, and and on the show, not one dimensional. There's a lot yeah. going on. And you can see maybe what happened to him that has made him this. So you feel bad for him. That's what James does so well is you're like, oh man, this is a terrible person, but I still feel bad for them. Why do I feel bad for them? They're a bad person. They shouldn't feel bad for them. You know, he can humanize anyone. And I think that's, especially in today's, you know, what's going on in the world and whatnot. I think that's so important to like be generous with, you know, with your yeah. empathy for people. Um yeah, I think I think that they're on the surface. Peacemaker is such a fun, silly, you know, show. But I think underneath, there's actually a lot of of depth, and I think it is such a good time for the story, um, uh, which I think is great. That's the best part is when you can merge those two things together. It's so neat to me too that he took um, minor characters from the movie and turned them into main cast. And yeah it's, and, it's, and they're great yeah they're great I think I, that's that's really good so i know i know we got to wrap up but i wanted to ask you about uh super pumped yes yeah it's yeah, very good tell, it, I, <laughs> I know i know so so it's not out yet so but it's coming soon right 
Uh, February 27th. So actually the week after I think Peacemaker ends, that yeah. will premiere. Um, and it's a Showtime. A Showtime show. Yeah. yeah. All right. So tell me about that one. Yeah. What's so a it's a cast. Talk about a cast. Yeah. Talk about a cast. I mean, we would continuously like every couple of weeks see another huge name on, on the call sheet. And I was like, when did Uma Thurman become a part of this show? You know, um, uh, it's a crazy cast. Uh, uh, Fred Armisen makes an appearance, uh, Hank Azaria. It, it's just insanity, but it's based on a book by Mike Isaac, which details the a lot of the reality and what was actually happening with the rise and fall of Uber. Um, so yeah, so Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays uh, Travis Kalanick. So almost all of us are, I think, I think actually everyone in it who is somewhat of a major character, but even some of the minor characters are playing real people, um, wow. which is crazy. Yeah, I've never yeah. played someone who actually exists in life before. So um, did you get to meet that person? No, I don't think any of us did um, uh, because I, th I think for what we're doing, you know, you it's about taking what the story is as we, as opposed to um, trying to mimic someone else or sound exactly like them. I think what more so we were all trying to capture is the heart of what the person was experiencing, you know? Um, so, so I purposefully, I, I looked up who I was playing just to kind of see what she looked like, but I was like, I'm going to leave that alone because I'm not trying to mimic someone or, right. or right. do a good impression of someone. I'm trying to find why I think she may have done these things and, and what she was feeling and, and whatnot, but it's a, it's a crazy show. I don't know if you know anything about the, about Uber as a company or anything like that. I certainly didn't before doing yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit, just a little bit, but yeah. no, not much. Yeah. I'm excited for the show though. It sounds terrific. Yeah. It's, it's wild. I, I would, I highly recommend it. Very different than Peacemaker, but, um, but uh, a great show with a fantastic cast. Kyle Chandler is in it, and he's fantastic, too. I love Kyle Chandler. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Well, and uh, um, Elizabeth Shue is in it yeah. as well. Yeah, yes. Elizabeth Shue. And some new-ish comers. Um, uh, there's an actor on it named Bobak uh, Tafty, who, who has definitely worked. A lot of people in the theater know him. I don't know if as many people know him yeah. uh, uh, in film and TV. But he, I think that when this show comes out, he will be, uh, he will no longer have time to answer my texts because the world <laughs> is going to see how fabulous he is. So wow. there's a lot, there's just like wonderful acting. And I mean, you know, it's the team who did Billions, which is also a great show. So you it really, like, show. we were in such good hands. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. What, what's your, what's your character's profession on the show? She basically uh, works, I think, for um, a drug company. And, but I basically play um, uh, in real life, Travis, but I played Joe's uh, girlfriend in the show. And in, in yeah. life, it was Travis Kalanick's real life girlfriend gotcha. that he had gotcha. while he was developing Uber. Yeah. And so she had a lot to do with Uber becoming what it is today. Um, and she was maybe one of the only people <laughs> in his life who was a really good pillar of support. Um, even past, I think when she should have been, um, but yeah, it's a very different part. It's really, it's a, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great show. It has to be an amazing feeling to have a hit show ending and one that, you know, is going to be a hit show starting. That's pretty great. I, I have to knock on all the wood I can yeah, find yeah. because I have been so lucky to, you know, with COVID and all the other things that are going on and so many actors and artists, I think being out of work because it's so expensive yeah. to make shows when you have to test it. Millions of dollars are going into yeah, testing. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, I have been so extremely lucky to get to do these back-to-back -back shows. So I feel, I count my blessings every day. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's just uh, amazing. And it got me thinking that if we were back in the, you know, the way it used to be where all the shows ran 20 plus episodes in a season you couldn't do that no no you know but these shorter seasons it allows you to to move around just a little bit which i if it were me i think i would like that yeah yeah it's nice it's nice to get to to play all these different people yeah. um especially to get to work with these teams yeah i've been i have been so incredibly blessed and lucky
I don't think there is one that you haven't done, but is there a genre that you haven't done that you would like to try? Um, no, I don't think so. I think what's funny is that, um, you know, actually, it, I don't know if I would say it's necessarily like a genre, but I've actually never done any work on a sitcom, any sort of three camera. And I originally come from yeah. theater. I love the theater. I love- Yeah, you the, should I, definitely do that. Theater. Yeah, so I think that's something that would be really fun for me. But at this point, I have nothing to complain about. So I, I'm so <laughs> happy with what I've gotten to do. I'm, a, I'm also a writer, so I'm trying to develop my own show right now. So that's been very, very exciting for me. So what, what's, what's that genre? Is it a comedy drama? Um, I think w I would like it to be a dark comedy and oh, it, nice. uh, yeah, yeah. So it'll be fun, maybe like a half hour, but we're very much in a developmental stage for it. Um, so hopefully one day there will be more to share about that. And and then maybe one day you can have me back to talk about. You something. have to come back to talk about your own. I would love to. On. You have to. All right. So I'll give you this because I'm not an actor, but these, it, this is the roles that I can help you with if you need something. Okay. They're very limited. So I can be um, a dead person Done. or someone that's dying as Perfect. long as I don't have really any line. You know, I can say something like, oh no. And, and you know, something like that. Or <laughs> this is the one I really think that maybe I could break into Hollywood with. So it's, I'm coming out of like a coffee shop. You know, I got my little coffee. I'm in a good mood. And the main character just comes by and slaps it out of my hand and then just keeps on walking. And I'm just like, oh, that's it. There you but, go. There's my, that's my range. But you once knew how to say, I'm sorry in Chinese. So you could be the person who knocks over the coffee and then says, I'm sorry in Mandarin. <laughs> Because you knew at one point, so you could relearn it again. No, that's 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 a lot of pressure. Um, uh, look, Chinese people love it when non-Chinese people speak any Chinese, even if it's just ni hao or dubuqi or any of those things. It's very exciting when people try. So I'm just saying. It, it, well, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. And, <laughs> and because it's, it's, you know, languages are difficult. And it amazes me. You know, I've talked to some actors and they'll speak six or seven different languages you know, most of them are not from uh, the United States, right. you know, so it's not that big a deal to them. They're just like, yeah, I've learned it. You know, we're here, we, you know, we might learn a second language, but that's, that's it. But right. I think that's, uh, that's something, if I could go back 45 years, I would have worked harder, you know, learning a, a second language. I mean, I took Spanish class and that type of stuff, right. so I can count and I kind of can recognize some words, but I can't speak it. Right, you know, right. So. Yeah, that's pretty good. Do you speak any other languages? No, I wish I spoke Spanish, especially living in Southern California. It yeah, would that would be, be so useful. useful. You know, um, uh, no, I, I was forced to go to Chinese school on top of regular school. So, and I wish my Chinese, even now, I wish my Chinese was better than it is. Um, um, but I'm glad it's not worse. It could be worse. So, um, so no, just, just Mandarin. I think, you know, yeah, I could count maybe to 10 in Spanish, but I certainly don't count that as speaking another language. Yeah, no, me neither. I can, I can count it. I'm very so impressed. Like, we'll go back and learn Spanish together. Yeah, we'll learn it together. <laughs> okay, great. My, uh, my oldest grandson, he can, he can count, um, in English and in Spanish. And yeah. I'm very impressed with that. Yeah. I'm just like, cause he's, you know, he's two and a half. And he's, oh, okay. he's, I'm like, well, he already knows more than I do. Great. Well, I'll FaceTime him and I'll teach him in Chinese too. He'll yeah, learn it. Yeah, he'll learn it. All right. Well, <laughs> Annie, thank you so much. This has been just so much fun. I, I'm so happy that you agreed to do this. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. And you definitely got to come back. We got to talk about your stuff for season two yeah. of something, hopefully. Hopefully. We will see. <laughs> Putting it out I there. Love to come back. <laughs> James, so couple, that's right. Yeah. If anybody's listening, a couple things before you go. Um, anything else um, that you're working on uh, that we can kind of keep an eye out for? No, the main thing now is just is just super pumped. Um, we're pretty good. Yeah, which is pretty good. <laughs> it's, isn't it? Pretty good. Exciting. Yeah. So just that, February 27th. February 27th, showtime. Okay. Showtime. Last thing. You know, where can we find you on social media? Oh, well, this is real easy to remember. 
the Twitter and the Instagram, which are mostly photos of my dog, but the Twitter and the Instagram. That's how I knew your dog's name. That's right. Um, she's the best. She's the best little dog. Um, uh, it's real boring. It's literally just, it's Annie Chang. That's my handle. You can't miss it. You can't get. I'm kind of impressed with that because I, and now I kind of wish I went back and went, you know, like with the Michael wall or it's Michael wall, something like that. But I, I, I'm not creative. What's yours? It's well, so mine actually is under MeisterCon. So I guess that's kind of different. That is cool. Yeah, that's kind of different. That's way cool. It's Annie Chang is real boring. And when I tell people, they're like, what's your handle? And I go, it's Annie Chang. And they're like, no, I know your name, your handle. And I'm like, it's Annie Chang. And then it's like this roundabout weird conversation, you know? Like a who's on first. <laughs> it really, yeah, it's terrible. But now I have it. So it's, that's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy to find. That's true. You're very easy to find. It was so easy to find. In fact, I was like, I had to double check. I was like, Make sure that was actually you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Annie. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you. All right, hold on one second. How fun was that? If you weren't a fan, and I don't know how you couldn't have been, but if you weren't a fan of Annie's before, I know you're a fan now. She is unbelievable. She's terrific. She's terrific and so good on Peacemaker love her role in my opinion they need to give her more although from what i'm hearing episode six she gets a little more um, to do she is a terrific actress and i i left some i could have uh kept going because she's been on a lot of shows that i've seen i loved her on bosch she was in first wives club 911 she had a little uh, a role house of cards carrie diaries I mean, i've been a fan of hers for uh for a little while, especially Bosch. That was a really good one. That was a really good one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again this week. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you're nerdy like me or if you're a comic book fan like me, make sure you go back. We have talked to so many people from just absolutely terrific DC Marvel shows. So make sure you go back and check some of those out. You know, if you're a fan of Titans or Doom Patrol, uh, Gotham, so many others, Flash, all of the CW shows, uh, Stargirl, all of those. We've got tons of interviews that I know you'll enjoy, so definitely check that out. You could do us a favor, if you're inclined, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. It's free, but that will really help us up or help us out. We are... Uh, the, the show's doing so well. I'm so proud of it. But we're trying to get to that next level. We're, we're taking the show to, uh, you know, bigger and better things. And in order to do that, we have to have those subscription numbers. So if, if you're inclined, please do that. And in return, you'll be notified for all, the, all of our great guests. And you'll also have that access to 350 interviews now. I guarantee you'll find a ton of people that that you like. You can also find all of those episodes, audio and video, on our website, MeisterCon.com. There's a, a fun, geeky blog on there from Brett. Uh, it'll let you know if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going to uh, do something remotely, or if we're covering conventions. All that will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. So thanks so much to Annie. She is amazing i know i'm a, a much bigger fan and i was a pretty big fan coming in so terrific um and thank you guys for for giving us another chance this week you know you keep coming back to us I, i'm so happy about that till next time bye everybody